This week it was IFA 2019 and every year there's a ton of smart home products there, but this year things got serious. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by giving you a ton of new smart home products that have come out at this industry event. Now, I also know how scary that can be because as smart home owners, as automators like we are, this industry continues to shift and that can be scary for our home. So I'm going to make sure to tell you my perspective or my initial impressions here on which products I think we should watch. Philips Hue came out and showed us their new filament bulbs. They showed us their smart plug and they also showed us a smart button. Now that was really the only new device. Everything else has been previously announced but we're now seeing the versions of it. LifeX also showed us some filament bulbs so we're seeing this movement in the industry to kind of some of these prettier light bulbs coming out from the big makers and we also saw a LifeX switch come out with four different controls on it. Some of the most exciting stuff has to be what came from Lenovo. Now they put out a seven inch smart display that is intended to go right up against this. We know they already have their eight and 10 inch smart displays, but they brought out a seven inch with the speaker on the bottom. It looks a lot more like this device here. Still looks a little bigger to me overall, so I'm very interested to, to try this very price competitive device with the Google Nest Hub. Now they also put out the Yoga Smart Tablet and this is getting to be an interesting device to me because of the new Google Assistant ambient mode. So once you dock this tablet, it will essentially become a smart display with Google Assistant on board. So very powerful stuff coming from Lenovo and I do generally like their products. Amazon is about to blast us with 20 new devices. That's the rumor out there and I've seen some of them but the ones they've put out at IFA here are the new or the second generation of the Amazon Fire TV Cube. Now this is being released to more countries and that's very exciting for us here in Canada. It's around that $120 mark but also has picked up some new capabilities with IR control of different devices so very exciting there. Now I already put in my pre-order on the Fire TV Cube. I do want to try this second generation of the device and I think given how good their Fire Stick is that this is going to be a great device and will really challenge the Harmony Hub which has struggled with integrations in a number of different ways. Now moving on to their other product that they released here it was really a partnership with Anchor and it's called the Nebula Soundbar. Now that's a $230 soundbar which is not out of the realm of possibility when you think about soundbars but it's also very capable as a multimedia device. So similar to the Fire TV Cube, it has a Fire TV stick on board and a ton of HD transmission features. Now there are a number of makers that put out new products that we've been following on the channel for a while and it's likely that you use some of these products. Now Fabaro was one of those companies and they've put out a new Z-Wave series of switches called the Wally Switch. Now there's a plug, there's a switch, and they are kind of more on the square side. So I think I'll struggle here with putting them into my home, but they are very interesting to look at, highly capable, and of course will work with most of the smart home hubs. So if you have that style of switch, it's definitely something to look at. Eve put out something called the Water Guard, and I think this is not necessarily something I'm going to look at in my home. I always find Eve's products a little bit on the pricey side, and they're really intended for home kit, but still within that I can see a real commercial application to this device and the reason for that is you can take their sensor which is a cable and extend it up to 59 feet so this is something that I could see companies using along walls in warehouses things like that. Nidatmo has been producing a security system for a little while and they dropped their siren on us now it's an $80 siren and that brings the overall price to around $380 for the 
a security system. Unfortunately, I think unless you really, really want something from Netatmo, then I think you leave this one to the side. There's really better platforms for a lot less money in terms of security. Samsung also had a number of things on display that we haven't really seen in the North American market here. Really, the Vision is only released to a couple Nordic countries, actually. And this sensor is intended to kind of do a lot of the things actually that WISE has been doing with their personal detection or person detection. This sensor isn't a camera, but it is intended to be able to detect animals versus people and different objects and really to be a smarter motion sensor overall. The other thing we saw was their air quality sensor and this has been really quiet since CES. So it was great to see that and that's a device I'm definitely looking at as a Samsung SmartThings owner and user. The the DBot Osmo 950 is compatible with your voice assistant and can do multi-level mapping. Now obviously you're going to have to carry this thing, but it can also switch between modes in terms of kind of scrubbing or vacuuming and will do so based on the material it's on. Maybe one of the most impressive displays and impressive presentations really at this conference came from Bosch and we don't really think of Bosch as a major smart home player but what they've done with what they're calling their connected home seems very powerful to me. Now there's some caveats to that so stay with me here for a second but they have a number of partnerships that they've gone ahead and created Google, Amazon, If This Then That, you know me, it's a real who's who of companies trying to connect multiple devices and multiple platforms together and that's great to see when we think about all of these appliances that they want to put out and get connected. Now, what I'll tell you about this is, and this is my struggle with appliances at the moment, unless you have to go and replace an appliance, I wouldn't say you go look at a smart appliance right now and go start replacing for fun. There's just not enough standardization out there. And so what you're going to see with products like this from Bosch is, Unfortunately, you're going to have different features per appliance. It's going to get better over time or some features will be removed because compatibility won't be there. It's really going to be all over the place until we start to get really standardized ways to handle these appliances. And there's nothing on the horizon right now. So this could be a bit of a wait. And that's where I say, nice to look at, but maybe hold off here. Something I would buy, well, a robot that can pour beer. And yes, to Vanessa here, life is complete. You could have seen the Room Me article that we posted on automatelife.net. Alan did a little bit of research here and actually worked with the company to understand their device. Now, it's essentially going to use your smartphone to detect who's in the room at a time and then kind of personalize your situation or your automations there. So I like the idea of the device. I'm interested to see if it can do more than just the smart home or a smartphone application detection because you know, a smartphone can be left places. So that's kind of the one piece there with that, but I wanna see one of these devices and work with it. Now, hopefully you'll forgive me as I butcher these company names. Medisana has a new personal robot that they're kind of in the testing stages for here that is intended to help seniors live at home, kind of provide them with some testing and access to different services that they might need. This reminds me a lot of what Samsung unveiled at CES. A couple of smartwatches were there that I really like the look and feel of, and we'll have to pay attention here to the Garmin venue. $400, five day charge, very powerful, things like sweat loss, estimation, you know, really different things being measured by these smartwatches now. And with all of that, 20 different exercise modes, sleep measurement or, or sleep monitoring as well. So a lot of great features there. The one thing that I don't know is what integration they'll really have because Garmin hasn't necessarily been the best at partnering with other companies. The other watch, and you know, when we go from a five-day charge, we go all the way with the Asus Vivo watch to a 
14 day charge. Now this is the SP version. We don't have pricing yet with this one, but they have things like ECG, PPG, and a number of other monitoring solutions like your stress level. So they're really trying to narrow in on the health market here. A couple of products that are really almost concept products, the Safera or Safera Smart Sensor here, it's really intended to sit around your oven or your stove top and monitor the situation. So if things are kind of getting out of hand, it's intended to turn off your cooking appliance. Now, the other thing that I saw that was very interesting was called the Key or Kai wireless charging system in your kitchen. Now, this is not something we'll see till 2021 at least, and that's coming from the company themselves, but it's essentially a charging pad like you use for your smartphones. Being the engineer that I am, what I wanna see are some electromagnetic field strength graphs, I wanna see some visualizations, and I really wanna understand because they're putting a lot more uh, charging capability into that, and it will be great to see this really remove some of those, you know, devices from our counter like toasters or microwaves or things like that because we can then place them on this, have them charge for a moment and then start to utilize them. So very interesting systems being created but whether or not they ever show up in our homes is another whole story. LG ThinQ Fit Virtual Dresser essentially measures you and suggests the clothing that you could wear, also gives you sizing distinctions here for yourself so it make you maybe feel a little bad depending on how you're doing it in your diet right now but very cool stuff we're not talking a release date or a pricing by any means at this point but very interesting to see kind of the closet world be attacked and on that note Samsung's air dresser looks like a very serious product that would replace a dry cleaner for any of your dry clean only clothes and I wonder if it has applications for just cleaning clothes in general so very interesting stuff there but we don't have a release date or a cost yet for those now Google is also releasing their Nest Hub Max they really didn't showcase it there but it is all over the place now and I've ordered mine at this point and it's arriving very soon here so you're going to want to stay tuned to the channel go ahead and subscribe but there's also a ton of new features that have come out here in preparation for that and as we go forward with the integration of Google and Nest applications. So what you're going to want to do is watch the latest updates and features video that I put together there to make sure you're ready for this with your Google and Nest products in your smart home. Of course guys, until next time, don't hate, automate.